heart pounding, <laughs> drenched in sweat, you got this. and no excuses. These are the greatest workouts in America. We as humans are far more capable than we believe. No matter the odds. Think about the end result. Get out there and get going. We're going to start with 45 minutes. This is Pumped. Hi there. That's me doing some upside down push ups. And yes, I'm wearing skates. I'm sure you're wondering why. Well, that one's easy because I live on skates. Welcome to my city, Night Skate! Who's excited? Woo! Skating, it's like having a superpower. Freedom, the joy of movement. During the pandemic, skating has been an absolute lifeline. Not the normal life, the skating life. There's a boom happening in New York City's skating scene, and I'm so fortunate to be a part of it. My name's Arnav Shah. In the skating world, I go by Sonic. Kind of like that blue hedgehog you may have heard of. And just like him, I like to go fast. New York City. I was born and raised here in Queens. I grew up in this very neighborhood, mostly working class immigrant families. For me, this is where I feel like I could be like myself. You could be weird in whatever kind of way you want to be here. I remember the day, it was, uh, I was 11 years old in May 1997, I got my first pair of skates. So I used to go into the parks and like slide down the playground slides. I don't know how I was doing that. In high school, we had a skating gym class. In college, I practically lived on skates. Well, couldn't resist on a day like this. All year round. When I moved back to the city, after scoring a software engineering gig at Google, I packed my skates and headed to the village to start living the dream. I was actually an ice skater when I was seven years old, but I got into ballet around the same time. So, you know, the whole life trajectory, basically I became an artist, musician, dancer, and I did not revisit skating until, wow, 40, I'm now 40. That's my partner, Jen. She's great. When we met, she liked to skate a little bit, mostly on ice. Now, she's all over the streets with me. His passion was as strong as mine was for music. Like, I totally got it. He taught me everything, I know. <laughs> got really fluent in slalom, at least as a beginner. And then summer came, July, August, and then Wednesday Night Skate started up again. Wednesday Night Skate is New York's longest standing skating event. It's a group ride, it's the biggest one in the country, over 100 people a week, meeting up every Wednesday night, Union Square at 7.45 p.m., as we've done for over 20 years. It all started as a dream, now I pull up to the scene. Do not take over the entire street, just most of it pandemic year or not, a lot of skaters, we're just off on our own, we're just skating by ourselves. It's like a revolutionary thing to be like, wait, I can skate with other people? It's fast, everyone's really friendly, um, the streets are a little bit chaotic. You never know kind of what to expect. I skate for fun, for fitness, and because of the friends I've made here. That was Mike Kowalski's birthday! I'm a performer, and I get applause by performing music. Here, we're just skating, and we're getting applause. It's a beautiful vibe. We just might be totally from different worlds, and that really, it doesn't matter. We're all connected by skating. We all really freaking love to skate. I can't put it any better than that.
Welcome to my skate shop. Check it out. After leaving Google in 2016, I broadened my horizons, traveling to every skating event I could, becoming an instructor, and tinkering with skate technology. Gonna go grab the customer and then uh, I'll be back. The more I learned, the more I wanted to share the magic of skating with others. Yeah. We're gonna get to some upgrades? Yes, absolutely. All right, you excited? One of my customers called it a speakeasy because it's, you know, the address isn't published until they make their appointment. And then they gotta find the place and I gotta meet them out and bring them into like a kind of a secret location. I usually just slalom him to a stop. He has all sorts of wisdom, your bearings, your frame, whatever you think you have an issue with, he will absolutely support you. This is my side hustle. Big difference, right? It's less about the money and more about connecting amazing people with awesome gear inside this astounding community. The appointments here are all one-on-one. -on -one. You get the shop to yourself and my undivided attention, which works pretty well with the whole social distancing thing. It's just really awesome to know that I have somebody like him behind my back. While the pandemic increased the popularity of skating, it also created a really big problem for my shop and others. The worldwide supply of inventory and shipping just got all screwed up. I placed this order sometime last year. It's supposed to come in March. I finally got them. A whole lot of pairs of skates, and oh my God, is it so great to have skates here and to be able to just get people on skates. Getting all this great stuff to everyone who needs it, it just speaks to his entrepreneurial spirit. He's always creating. I can't think of a better person to be kind of taking on that role. They've done studies of New York City rats. Most of them don't venture more than a few hundred feet from where they're born. As much as I've traveled all over the country and the world, Paris, Berlin, the Swiss Alps, from one end of Iowa all the way to the other. I kind of feel like I'm just one of those rats. The future of skating in New York is very exciting. There's been a sonic boom in New York's skating scene. New skaters, new community, new friendships. And as for this sonic, well, I might not be a hedgehog, but that's okay. I enjoy being just another New York City rat, living my best life. Up next, climbing is like 80% mental. Like, it doesn't really matter your physical strengths or physical capabilities. Everyone has different styles that they're good at. And later... When she wins the first competition, I say, oh my God. She's already had eight competitions, and she's won first place in all of them. You're watching Pumped. Hey, my name's Ross Slotnick. I'm the general manager of Island Rock here in Plainview, New York. And uh, here's a place where you can come to live out your childhood dreams of climbing on top of furniture, on top of the walls. And this is a place you can come down for your next local adventure. So we have three different forms of climbing here at Island Rock. Uh, we have bouldering, which is unroped climbing. It's lower to the ground, similar to what you see behind me. It's always done over these crash pads because all falls will result in a ground fall, which also makes it one of the most risky forms of climbing. We also have two different forms of roped climbing. So we have top roping, and then we also have lead climbing climbing or sport climbing, which is a more advanced form of rope climbing as well. It's a really freeing sport. It's one that not only challenges you physically, but mentally, because you have to solve the problems on the wall. But it's one that never pits you against your competitor or your friend, because you always want to work together to solve the climb. And even if it's their first time doing a zero, you're super psyched for them. And if it's your first time doing like a V7, they're always psyched for you. You got it, you got it. Yep, two Both hands. hands. Climbing is like 80% mental. Like, it doesn't really matter your physical strengths or physical capabilities. Everyone has different styles that they're good at, whether it's using their feet or using their arms or just having a good brain because it's about figuring out puzzles and being willing to like stick through those puzzles. It's just about starting and once you start, then like it's up from there. 
I came here when I was like nine for a birthday party and I just fell in lo love with it after that. I could barely get off the ground. Now it, I just can't stay off the wall. So the climbing industry as a whole is a very, very welcoming uh, you know, sport, very welcoming group of people. Here at Island Rock, we emphasize community. In my opinion, sets us apart from some of the other you know, corporate multi-facility nationwide gyms. We've been here for 25 years, since 1996. Uh, so we're ingrained part of the greater you know, Nassau County, Long Island community. No matter who you are, no matter what you're into, no matter what your background is, we have you know, the ability for you to come climb here. You know, we have people that you know, overcome you know, new things every single day. I just need you to fill out a waiver and you'll be good to go. Later. Your difference is your power, so hey, just let it shine and be yourself. Other people will, will see that and, and love you for who you are. You're watching Pumped. My MMA journey uh, has been crazy, amazing. I went, um, I think, unbeaten for 10 to 12 fights. I was the best in the world for over three years. December of 2005, I took my first Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, class. I really didn't know what to do. I had five days to train for my first professional fight at that time in 2006. So I had five days to run on the treadmill. And, and the, the following Saturday, I was fighting in a ring, um, AFC 15. And I was fighting Lisa Ward. Uh, she was in the top 10 in the world at that time um, and I was just a body you know I was just a body first round I was getting arm barred and I heard her father was like Lisa tear her arm off and I was like oh no <laughs> and I was like what do I do like give me some direction he was like go go I'm like go where can't go anywhere um, but I, I hung in there so um, there was no fear. I was just happy to be doing something new and experiencing something and, and um, yeah, it, it was a great experience. I wanted to do it again, but I said, this will never happen to me again. Like I, after that, I was like, I have to, I have to get better at this. Nobody's ever gonna, you know, humiliate me or, or, or like that. In the video, when I was getting arm barred, I wasn't scared. There's no fear, and I think that's the that's the beauty. I mean, I've I've that's something that I've carried throughout my life. I, there's no fear. Like I'm gonna do it, and I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, right? All of the major and local um, promotions of MMA do have women now. Just really proud to see that. Yeah, women, we headline cards now. So it's uh, it's really cool. When I was still a white belt. I think it was in 2008, I, uh, I was competing in New York in the Pan Ams and uh, we were in Gold's Gym and I saw Dana White and I went up to him and I gave him my business card and I was a white belt at the time. I had like, I don't know, three fights and um, I gave him my business card and I said, one day I'll be your champion and he laughed at me and he was like, okay, you know. Um, and then he went on to say a couple years later that women will never be in, that would never be in the UFC. And look at us now, right? So uh, it's it's pretty amazing to see. I'm super proud to be a trailblazer for, for females in MMA. I grew up here in Houston, Texas. I was uh, the only girl. I uh, grew up the youngest of two with two two older brothers. Um, and I grew up always wanting to do with, you know, always wanting to do what they were doing, playing sports. Um, my mom, very old fashioned Mexican, Mexican family, Mexican culture. Um, and yes, I, I always hid sports from my mom because she never wanted me to play sports. Um, I went to a private school here in Galena Park, uh, Our Lady of Fatima, and uh, I was the only girl on the guys' basketball team. My mom found out and I had to, you know, had to, t had to leave a guy's team, but uh, we created a female team, and that first year that we created the team, we became champions, so it was really cool. I've always been, that's always been, sports has been my love. It's been like my therapy. I am a proud uh, and out athlete. The message that I have for others that want to come out is, yeah, your difference is, your power so 
hey, just let it shine and be yourself. Other people will, will see that and, and love you for who you are. Growing up, it was tough for me to come out um, only because I was raised in a Catholic Catholic religion and you know my mom very old-fashioned Mexican mother um, but I knew as a kid I was always different and special and so um, I knew that you know I wasn't a bad person and and um, and I loved myself and I believed in everything I did my girlfriend Shalita Grant is here with me today a mutual friend of ours introduced us I guess she, she said, okay, you got one cage fighter, cr a crazy, and then you have a beautiful actress, and they're both single. Let's just put them together. Her heart, her strength, her fortitude. Jess is the kind of woman who has accepted that when she says something, she can make it happen. And that is something that I respect, that I hold in really high regard, and I also really support. She's an intense, beautiful, passionate, artistic woman. She paints my, she does my pedicures. <laughs> She's just full of life. Coming up. Kids, they come in and out, and that's very talented kids. Nice. The things that she can do, the things that she can put together, it's not normal for a, a kid her age. You're watching Pumped. Jump back and run. Sarah was two years old when I met her mom, so she started coming here when she was around two years old. She started taking them to gymnastics pretty fast. Sarah is definitely a prodigy. I've been coaching for 35 years, and I see kids, they come in and out, and that's very talented kids. Nice. The things that she can do, the things that she can put together, it's not normal for a, a kid her age. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have Sarah here, a five-year-old, doing her record, eight back handsprings. In my gym, we have a thing to get a five-year-old to do a back handspring, and it's a big thing. So she was four years old and she started doing her first back handspring. Those are just crazy numbers to, to do from a kid in that age. Congratulations. Turn to a set. I was really surprised when I started seeing how fast she started connecting her skills because a lot of times in gymnastics you have to go through uh, certain progressions. She was flying right through them. She said, no, I love tumbling, mama. Actually, tumbling is so easy, mama. You're what? Tumbling is not easy. Yes, mama. Tumbling is so easy. Hi, my name is Sarah Falcon and I'm six years old and I'm Texas Power Tumbling Champion. Well, when I started gymnastics, I was two years old. Okay. Susanna and I, we were both into fitness, and she was at a booth doing some fitness products, and I told her I'm my coach in gymnastics. She goes, and she goes, hey, I have a daughter. She's, you know, she likes gymnastics. She came in here and was like, wow, your daughter's really good. When they finished every class, but she say, mom, mom, love it. Jerry say, hmm, I think she's good for, for gymnastics, and, and it started. What I like about gymnastics is it's fun. Body stays tight, arms stay by your ears. I practice every day and every day I get strong. Sarah competes in power tumbling and it's a skill where you tumble down a rock floor and you want to connect your skills fast, fluently, and speeding. She's a level five, so her first pass you have to do run, do six back handsprings, rebound into the air with control and stick and not move. That's her first pass. Her second pass is gonna run, do three back handsprings, and do a set tuck. At six years old, doing a backflip on this floor and sticking in that pass, that is really, really good. All right, back handspring. We're back handspring, Sarah. I'm nervous because Sarah is my daughter. And then I see maybe she fall down or everything. Woo, very nice. Nice fall, too. There's good falls and there's bad falls. That was a good one. But for me, it's more comfortable and secure when he's training for Sarah. I know he's he take care a lot for Sarah. I'm proud of both of them because they, they came from Venezuela. It's a hard story to come from a place where you have to start over. I will live with my mom, my dad, and everything in Venezuela. And then, but uh, I need the future for her. She's got degrees and she's got to come over here and start from the very rock bottom. And uh, I can't speak English. I can't work. I have two degrees and everything. Really, really start zero. It's 
you see it. They worked so hard and they endured so much in the new country, in a new place. The first two years or one year is so hard, but God is good and you know, all the time He's going to ask it. I never, never feel alone. Uh, after meeting her and, and listening to her story and where she comes from, and uh, that touched my heart. When I come in here I'm with my daughter, I think never start again the new relationship, but Jerry, he's blessed for me and my daughter. She's a nutritionist, uh, and uh, so she cooks food and makes meals for people. And so, so I tried, tasted some of her food and it's over. <laughs> when I know Jerry say, oh my God, it's perfect. <laughs> it's the same, me, but the boys. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Remember, you gotta hit this angle here and then arms go right on top. So I love Jerry and say, mom, my daddy is, is, is my coach, but actually it's, it's I, daddy is everything, mom. <laughs> One. Oh man, when Sarah competes with the, the focus that she has, she is pretty amazing at that. Good job. When I go to competitions, people are surprised because I'm so small. It feels fun and I'm excited. When she started in the first competition, she's level two. And in first place, we have Sarah. And then when say first place, Sarah Falk, what? And then when she wins the first competition, I say, oh my God. She's already had eight competitions, and she's won first place in all of them. She won state championships, so right now she's a state champion. She scored a really high score, and it got her into the Junior Olympics championships. And she's competing with the eight-year-olds and under, and she's six years old because her skills are so high, her, she's got to compete with the older kids. I watch, oh my God, my little, my baby's here, and then the notice is so tolerant. It's okay, mom. Got it. Do the half, then do it in my hands, that way you can start going on your own. The hardest thing I can do right now is a half. layout half. Most of the girls can do layout half, and they're like 10, 11, and 12, and I'm just six years old. With the tumbling that she does, she can go to world championships and represent the United States in power tumbling. Boom, boom, whip, backhand spring. Nice, nice job, nice job. I can coach any skill in tumbling, but I cannot coach your heart. You have to bring the heart, and Sarah definitely has the heart. Have a favorite spot to get pumped? Tell us on social media.